What is good Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And this one, I want to break down what's going on with Tesla Spy and a couple of other tickers. I want to break down what's going on with the economic calendar and what the news is saying about Tesla as time goes on. But before I break anything down, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account, you are guaranteed up to six free stocks. If you deposit $500 into the account, you're guaranteed 20 free stocks plus six months of level two data. Putting in $25,000 or more gets you 70 free stocks plus 12 months of level two data. Now, this offer ends in just about six days from now, so check it out before they run out. Anyways, let's break down what's going on with the market. So, when it comes to Tesla and the market, uh, I just want to mention that so far, uh, you know, Tesla's looking relatively weak as we had some more bad news that came out. Uh, the bad news is continuing to hurt Tesla and make it very weak compared to the markets. But with a decent CPI, SPY is pumping, Apple is pumping, NVIDIA is holding up quite decently. The QQQ is pumping, Microsoft is pumping, AMD is up quite big. The market is still holding up nicely. Same thing with Amazon and Meta. The market is still pushing. And this is what I was talking about yesterday to be happening to the markets. Tesla most likely would have followed the trend. It would have been nice and green today if it wasn't for the bad news that was coming out. So I just want to break down what's going on with the markets. I'm going to first talk about the economic calendar. Then I'm going to be talking about Tesla uh, in more detail. But as a reminder, guys, CPI was decent. We got a 4% quarter CPI aligning with expectations, with CPI being at 3.1% aligning with expectations. Now, I was hoping that we would get a CPI at 3%. There's no way I can predict like the 0.1% interval difference, like 100% accurately. But I was hoping for 3%, just a tiny bit lower than expectations to cause an even bigger rip. Instead, CPI was as expected. So CPI was as expected. SPY is pumping. The market is pumping. Imagine if this thing was lower than expected. We would have gotten an even bigger pump. But it's okay, guys. We still got a, a decent sized pump. I was talking about that yesterday. And that's what ended up happening for almost every stock in the market, or at least the majority of them. So now the question is, what's happening with tomorrow? As a reminder, I just want to remind you guys that an hour before the market opens, we have the PPI report coming out. This is a leading indicator for CPI, similar to CPI except for the producer side. And then at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have the Fed interest rate hike decision coming out. And then at 2.30 p.m., we have the Fed press conference. That's going to be very important as well. Uh, this is going to be important because Jerome Powell is going to give a speech and then talk about what the Fed is basically projecting, how they're looking at the interest rates. Will they plan on cutting sooner than expected? We know what he's going to say, basically. I think he's just going to say the same thing. Uh, but the market's going to have a very nuanced response. The market could pump or even dump, depending on what he says. So Powell usually just gives the exact same speech, and the market will just have a very different response. It's very hard to, to, hard to predict. So we'll be watching for that very carefully. Uh, as far as Tesla goes, we have some negative news that Chinese registrations have fallen, but it's still on pace for record sales, which is a good thing. The Based off the insurance registrations, the Chinese sales have declined more than 10% last week. There's a 12.5% drop to about 15,400 from 17,600 during the prior week. And on top of that, uh, we still are aiming for 1.8 million uh, deliveries for 2023 q4 right now is still up about seven percent in china relative to q3 which is still good but we just want to see some better numbers now with this news coming out i just want to add that there were other factors that contributed to tesla there was a bernstein that was saying that tesla has a 150 dollars price target tesla is going to tank because of low demand there's also some bad news involving the unions and the list goes on, guys. I was talking about the bad news yesterday already in more detail. I'm not going to talk as much about it today. I just wanted to focus on the latest things that just came out. But there is some good news. Tesla has announced it's coming to Qatar, which is good news for them. Uh, it's basically going to be expanding its electric vehicle business to Qatar with the launch of its online uh, configurator in the country. That's good news for them. Uh, with that happening, this is going to lead to more potential sales and more and more buyers out there. I'm excited to see uh, how this ends up playing out for them. Uh, and with that being said, now let's just talk about the charts. So Tesla's looking relatively weak because of the bad news, the price downgrades, you know, the Chinese sales dropping uh, relative to last week. Uh, Tesla's down a bit. So we have this support right over here where it's trying to hold up between 233 and 234. And we're going to be watching to see how Tesla responds to this. Watch resistance at 237. If we break above this, watch 238. And for support, watch two, uh, 235 followed by 233. Right now, 
if you look at the way that this is looking, we have this downwards channel that's still being respected. It's not looking that strong because on a day like this, Tesla should have been green with the market, but it's looking relatively weak because of the bad news. It looks to me like Tesla is going to kind of range trade around this 236 area for the rest of the day. I don't expect too much to be happening, but the other tickers out there are looking a bit stronger for the intraday basis. Now, as far as SPY goes, we're looking quite good. We have this new channel that could be drawn out. We're holding support quite nicely. And in my opinion, I think that it's looking uh, primed for even more upside. So uh, as this thing is pushing, watch for this 430, 464 area as our key resistance. There's also some resistance at uh, 463.5. I think we just broke above that. We're getting very close to that. So we're getting very close to this resistance at 430, uh, 464. Excuse me, guys. Sorry about that. 464. We'll be watching that very carefully. Spy is holding up nicely thus far, and there's no sign of it breaking down. Watch support at 463. Below that, we have 462.5 and 462. As of right now, it's holding up. So watch for 464. We're getting a nice pump as we predicted yesterday. On the QQQ, we got an even better pump. I mean, this thing is breaking past 398 the next area is going to be like 400 we don't have much resistance until then so it's holding up very nicely but always watch this yellow trend line is supported 396 because i don't know if jerome powell is going to cause some volatility to cause this to drop tomorrow or not we don't know for sure yet so just be very careful with fomc but regardless of fomc the QQQ is looking bullish overall. It looks bullish overall. The four hour time frame is holding up nice. We've got a nice PPO crossover with a wide open MACD. And 400 is a potential target that we have, and it's just looking quite good. Now, on NVIDIA stock, okay, uh, NVIDIA is still holding up all right. Uh, you guys can see that we had this blue trend line. I wasn't sure if this thing would break below this or not or try to bounce from here. I told you to watch and see if we bounce. We ended up getting a bounce off of it, which is a good sign. And we made our way back up to this resistance around this 474.5 zone. So if we break above this, our next target is going to be around this 478 area. And if we break above that, we have this high uh, to be watching for. And this could take us towards this imbalance at this 482 zone. So... Uh, if anything, we're making this higher highs and higher lows consistently, and we could try to push up a little bit higher. Uh, it is a possibility that we try to get up to 480 to 482. Yes, it could push up higher, but we're going to be watching this very carefully to see how it responds to FOMC and such. But as of right now, I don't think NVIDIA is going to break out too much from here, even drop too much. I think it's just going to be range bound in the 474s. So that's all I see for the rest of the day. Nothing too crazy. We'll be watching to see how it moves. Last but not least, we have Apple stock. Apple was range bound and we got a breakout towards our resistance right over here around this 194.4 area. If we break above this, we have 195, then we have a gap to fill at 195.7. We also have support at 193.5, followed by 193 and then 192.5. As of right now, it's holding up nicely, it's trying to push up. We'll be watching to see if this could break. Uh, Apple is looking decent. We also have this gap above here, but I can't really predict everything for tomorrow because it depends on FOMC. But I can tell you the, the areas to be watching for and some moves that could be made. As of right now, we're holding up quite decently. Now, I do want to note one thing that is a little concerning to me would be the fact that there is a possible head and shoulders developing, just possibly not going to guarantee it. You could argue there's like a left shoulder here and like a head uh, a head up here and like a right shoulder that could be forming. Not a guarantee, though. It could still fill this gap and invalidate it because the weekly still looks quite bullish and 197 is still a target. So we're just going to keep this in the back of our minds and watch this resistance in this 195 range very carefully to see if we reject or not. If we continue to break out, there's definitely a lot more upside potential. But anyways, guys, that's what I have for this video. Thank you all so much for listening. Have an absolutely incredible rest of the day. Remain calm, cool, and collected. And I hope that this video was helpful, at least from an intraday basis. I'll be talking more about the markets for tomorrow as we have FOMC. I'll be releasing another video in just a couple of hours. So please stay tight until then. Remain calm, cool, and collected. Watch the markets and do what you have to do, guys. I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you and peace out.